through the week and everything's going all right it's been a fun start to this week i had some guests come and visit me some very special guests um cody wright was here and also brandy win whose bass i'm holding right now and um i have the pleasure of doing a couple little demo videos and kind of um you know messing around with this bass for a couple weeks we swapped instruments just for fun and uh i get to have some fun with this beautiful Elric uh, Evolution Bass for a couple weeks. So today I'm going to do this demo for you. Um, just a little bit of back history. Brandy is the longtime bass player for uh, Osric Tentacles, and uh, which is a UK band that is uh, fantastic, to say the least. Very cool, progressive, and um, creative artistic band. Put out many albums and been together something like 35 years. But um, for sure one of the coolest and hippest bands out there and I've been a fan of Osric for uh, about 18 years and uh, so I was it was kind of a fanboy moment for me to meet Brandy and uh, now I have her bass in in my hands and this is really cool so this is an Elric bass it's called the Evolution Model um, I don't know a whole lot about Elric because you know this is the first time I've ever even checked one out but I can tell you what I can tell you is this it's a, it's an incredibly well-made custom boutique instrument okay it has definitely has a swamp ash back with a with a with a bolt-on neck in this nice wooden compartment so this is a very detail oriented boutique instrument right off the bat okay one thing I noticed is the neck shape felt uh, it feels a little bit like my USA uh, MTD Saratoga so, um, you know, if you know what they feel like, it feels a little bit like that. I mean, quite similar, in fact. Uh, it has a rosewood fingerboard and these totally crazy blue multicolor inlays that basically just kind of put you into a kooky trance as soon as you look at them. If you look at them really closely, they kind of look like a crumpled up aluminum foil, colored crumpled up aluminum foil. And that's what gives it the 3D texture. So it's really cool when you, um, the effect that that has, the three-dimensional effect that that has, because I think that's what draws you into that kooky trance is the, is the way that they look so 3D. Um, I'm not positive about the top wood. I'm thinking that it's some kind of figured walnut, and it's definitely just has a, 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 an oil finish, just like oil soaked into it. There's no lacquer on it. It feels very uh, open, um, you know, open grain. It's smooth, of course, but it still feels woody and, um, you know, very open. Uh, matching top, you know, the same wood that's used on the top is, is, is capped on the headstock. I think there's a cool headstock. Um, big paddle headstock. Uh, from a distance, it looks looks bigger. When you're when you're holding this bass, um, it's not that thick front to back. It's lightweight, so it kind of looks bigger than it hangs and the, than it feels. It's it's not heavy. Balance is perfect, but um, with the big headstock and the kind of a bigger body, it appears to be more massive than it is when you're wearing it. Uh, what else? Back to the headstock. It's got the two, three uh, configuration for the tuners. You know, the E and the B are on the, on the, on the bottom side here. And we discussed this. Me and Brandy were discussing this. It's kind of cool because she's going to put a couple of extenders. You know, drop or drop extenders on there. And with uh, with the two on the top and the three on the bottom, that leaves plenty of room for that. Which was a point that she made. It's pretty logical, I think. <laughs> Uh, Bartolini pickups and three-band preamp, <clears throat> which is very cool. 
uh, it, it, like I said, it's a bolt-on. It has this great kind of um, scenario of the way that he he does the cutaway down here. The heel is, is nice uh, and um, recessed. Has five bolts that are holding the neck on there. And it's a really deep, you know, pocket. So that neck is, is in there really nice. So, and he uses his own bridge. Um, and the tuners are hip shot ultralight USA tuners. Okay, so enough of the specs. Let's hear what it sounds like. Right now it's on uh, both pickups. <clears throat> and the EQ is flat. Start bringing in some EQ. Okay, that is with all three of the EQ controls just cracked a little bit past the middle. You know, so it's kind of like a little bit of boost of everything. What I'm going to do now is go through the pickups. This is just the back pickup. focus so much more that doesn't mean that doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the instrument that's just a fact when you have both pickups and you have them both on and the and the blend control is right in the center it always robs some mid-range so what I always do and you know I've said this before I'll say it again and again and again I never leave it in the middle position I take it out of the center and I roll it slightly to the front or slightly to the back it brings it right in focus. I never leave that, that blend control right in the middle. I never do. Although, this one, it's not too bad in the middle for maybe like a slap sound. But even with a slap sound. You know, if you can get used to having that little bit of mid-range. paranoid they're they're afraid of mid-range and they and they and they tend to have this scoopy sound but um maybe that's a topic for another video you know i have the amplifier completely flat i love everything flat that's how i roll flat I picked it up over the last couple days. I played it the other night for about 10, 15 minutes, and um, you know, where I was just able to kind of mess around on it. You know, see what it, see if it if I could do all the things that I do. And you know, only within a very short period. 
time I was able to really become friendly with this instrument. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I was able to just completely um, become acclimated to it quickly. And uh, not only become acclimated and uh, just kind of um, be able to play the thing, I was able to kind of like feel creative quickly on it. And I think that's a measure of a good instrument. Is a, if an instrument makes me, in, you know, all of a sudden just kind of... start playing something that I don't always play every time I pick up a, a bass for the first time, if it takes me somewhere... You know what I'm saying? If it takes me out of my box and instantly I feel like I can get creative on it, I'm like, wow, this is a cool bass. This is a cool instrument. Because it's taken me somewhere new that I haven't necessarily gone before. having a lot of basses around is because you know I pick them up and throughout the day I might play 10 or 12 different basses in one day and I won't play the same thing on every single bass you know they're they're they take you to different places you know some got flat wound strings on it with a foam mute in the bridge some don't some are five strings some are four strings fretless fretted multi-string bass whatever each one's going to take you to a different place a real real old 60s bass is going to take you one place a new modern um you know Five string jazz bass is going to take me to a different place. So, um, you know, they all have a different personality and they all inspire in a different way. One thing's for sure that this Elric bass is a very wonderful instrument, and um, like I said, I was able to get friendly with it real quick. <laughs> I'm used to this Bartolini preamp because I have it in probably one, two, three, four, at least five other bases here. I have the exact same preamp and pickups. Got the zero fret. He uses the zero fret, which is nice. That's going to help make your open strings uh, have a nice. Um, nice sustain and nice shimmering kind of tone. I think that's the most beneficial thing that happens from having a having the zero fret. Real nice tight, tight low B. Not overly tight. The tension. I strung this with my with with a set of forty five to one twenty five black diamond strings, which are the strings I use and I love. They're nickel round wound forty five to one twenty five. Um, it feels real good. You know, I like tension, but I like it to be a little springy too. And typically, I like the action to be a little bit higher and a little bit of relief. I like to have that natural kind of big uh, organic. Um, string vibration wood tone thing going on i don't drop the fingerboard you know i don't i don't do the you know super flat neck and low low action light strings i don't do that thing um i just don't do that thing but uh this one is kind of in somewhere in the middle i put my strings on i didn't make any adjustments to her action or or anything like that i just put my strings on it feels feels real good it feels fast though for me <laughs> You know, like it, it, the, the action's low and it, and it feels real fast. But it's not buzzing or nothing. You know, that's about all I can 
can say about this Elric bass. It's cool. Great bass. Nice fretwork. And, um, yeah. Check them out. Built in Chicago. All right, friends. Thanks for watching this video. And uh, have a great rest of your week. Peace.